How's it going again, my friends? Well, today I'd like to talk a little bit about the cannabis market. Uh, first off, this video, whether or not it gets a strike from YouTube, remains to be determined. It seems that their algorithms pick out either Kratom or cannabis videos at random. But, uh, and uh, my other channel has a couple strikes against it, but, you know, it's just these are things I talk about. So, uh, of course, this isn't intended to be a promotional video for using cannabis. I just like to talk about a couple of uh, interesting facts that I've observed in the cannabis community, notably in Washington, where I live. I just want to put it this way: the legal cannabis market is complete bullshit, and um, there are a lot of problems in the industry, especially here in Washington. One example I'd like to give you is right across the bridge in Oregon. You can go into a cannabis dispensary or a recreational store and they have jars of cannabis. You can smell and look at the cannabis before you buy it. Whereas in Washington, every bit that's sold, whether it's a gram or an eighth or an ounce, has to be pre-packaged before it's brought to the retailer. And everyone has a lot code, of course, and a harvest date, but that's pretty meaningless when it sits on a shelf for months on end. And uh, most cannabis connoisseurs know that the idea was, with cannabis becoming legal, we hoped it would go down in price. And in many regards it has. You can go to Oregon and buy an ounce for $30 of, you know, just weed. But here's the thing. The top shelf cannabis still sells for $40 or even more per eighth of an ounce. And a lot of, um, a lot of people, a lot of the industry, you know, they gripe, they say, well, you know, nice cannabis, you know, it takes more energy to make, uh, you know, or the buds are smaller, or whatever it might be. This is all true, but the reason why cannabis was so high priced before was because it was illegal. It was because of the black market and the fact that if a person got caught, they were taking a huge risk, especially growers. But the growers today are maybe getting $1,000 per pound if they're lucky, from what I understand, in a lot of areas. Maybe more, maybe less, depending on where you live. But um, meanwhile, you know, selling it in the store, they're marking it up five, six grand per pound and, and a lot of this money goes to Uncle Sam. I'm not saying it's the store's fault or the grower's fault or the distributors. A lot of this money, the big money, goes to the corporations. What's happening is that these, uh, you know, family companies or groups of companies are buying, uh, buying up the, uh, in fact, they even lobbied to get cannabis legalized. I can't remember which state it was, but I think maybe Ohio or something. But they wanted to legalize cannabis, but the people voted against it because it was one company that wanted a monopoly on the cannabis. Interestingly enough, doing research on this subject, I found out that right just a ways here, uh, north of here, east of here, uh, North Bonneville, they actually have a, um, um, uh, a cannabis shop that's run by the government or the city, the local city, because they only have a million dollars at their disposal for the whole city. It's a very small city, you know, no schools or major shopping areas or anything. Um, and it's become a huge issue of contention with the new mayor who is totally anti-cannabis, but the point was that they wanted to bring in revenue and they wanted to do so by making uh, cannabis available, but doing it fairly. And the debate was whether or not if the state steps in and runs a cannabis shop, if that's better than letting, you know, individuals run their own shops. Regardless, what I'm saying is that the small guy has been pushed out. Once again, the, you know, your local mom and pop dealers and growers, they, if they, they still have, you know, their people that they might sell to, but um, as far as the market itself, a lot of people find it easier to just go to the store and buy their cannabis, myself included. And I'd like to say that that's a little bit dangerous for all of us because we should all be wary of what we're buying, who we're buying it from, who are the farmers, you know, are they huge organizations or small, smaller, you know, groups? What do they stand for? One thing I'd like to say and, and what kind of inspired this video is I went in to buy some cannabis earlier. I looked through their whole, like, the cheaper weed side. They had nothing in half ounces or ounces. The largest amount they had were quarter ounces. So then I went over to the, the higher end side. It was the same exact thing. And so I went and I asked her, I was like, what's up? Why don't you guys have any quantities? And she goes, oh, it's that time of year. It's the end of the year and, you know, it's harvest season and it's dr always dry this time of year. And you know what? I've been hearing this for 25 years. Sure, I've been a cannabis advocate for most of my life. And uh, I said, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. But, you know, you'd think that they'd be more prepared for this kind of stuff. I said, well, the outdoor, that makes sense. And I was then I walked over to the high end case and I... I said, is this all outdoor too? Because it was the good weed. And she goes, oh no, that's indoor. 
And I said, well, then what, why would that be affected? You'd think if you were aware that the outdoor was going to be short, then at least you'd have more indoor available because there are no growing seasons. I mean, if this is something that's uh, an indoor grown plant, we all know you can grow year round. Um, and in the old days, a lot of growers would give up for the summer because it was just too hot and they didn't want to deal with it. So there's always been a dry spell. But happening in this market is really funny because right across the bridge in Oregon, cannabis is cheaper, uh, much cheaper, and they have way more supply than they know what to do with. And so I, the whole, all states are kind of feeling this out, still figuring out what to do, how to tax it right, and make sure that everybody gets their share. But uh, in the end, I think that the problem, and this is, this is why I'm opposed to regulation rather than legalization completely, or you know, removing it from a, a substances list altogether and just allowing people to consume it and grow it whenever they want, wherever they want. Uh, the reason for this is because individuals should be able to grow their own cannabis or um, at the very least, you know, be able to obtain it relatively tax-free because I can understand alcohol tax, for example. There's a tax on alcohol. Alcohol causes a lot of deaths. It causes a lot of problems. So there's always been a tax, just like on cigarettes. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying with cannabis, it hasn't been shown to have any life-threatening you know, aspects to it. So a high tax is not warranted on something like that. And this is why we have taxes on certain things. So um, on that note, uh, in Washington, you can't, you can't grow cannabis. You, you're not allowed to grow your own plants, but right across the bridge in Oregon, you can have three. And each state has different regulations and rules. Uh, but meanwhile, when I drove to Montana, I had to pass through Idaho in the panhandle. And I was reading stories, nightmare stories of people who got busted over there with cannabis. Don't bring your weed to Idaho uh, because the rules are so harsh over there. But then I found out a trucker got pulled over and they searched his truck and confiscated 7,000 pounds of cannabis because they tested it and it showed positive for THC. It was hemp, which was coming from over east and it was destined for a company over here which was going to produce CBD products. So it started this whole big stink about, you know, the guy went to jail for four days, the truck driver, you know, the point being that Idaho has completely different rules. What they're doing is holding up commerce that's passing through. The rest of the world's moving on, legalizing hemp, legalizing cannabis. We're trying to feel our way to a future where people, you know, can use these products as they see fit. And I see no reason why it should be taxed or regulated whatsoever. I think it should just be left up to the people as a standard commodity, like anything else. Um, if I'm missing something, if there's a reason it should be taxed higher, you know, I'd be curious to know other people's opinions on that. But uh, uh, I think it's just a money grab. And many state and, you know, local group, you know, uh, organizations want to legalize just so they can make the tax revenue. It's not for the right reasons. It's not for the freedom of the consumer as it should be. But when a lot of folks when I've read people complaining about the legal cannabis market, there's always somebody there to say, oh, shut up, quit complaining. You should be lucky that you can even get cannabis because in my state, yada, 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 it's illegal. Hey, I get that. But believe me, we still have to be able to complain about the details because we can't just say, oh, thank you so much for legalizing cannabis and allowing us to consume a, free, a plant that grows in the wild. It's like, yeah, about time is more like the attitude we should have. About time you let us have our cannabis back because it was only... Uh, regulated in the first place for racist reasons and that's a fact you can look it up it's historically I always heard it was for the hemp for the paper industry and uh, all these different things the oil industry none of it was true it was really a racial issue um, just another way to keep people divided so looks like I gotta go thanks for listening I'll talk to y'all later peace out